International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Quality and speed are our culture and the keys to our success. Welcome to the audio summary section of the International Journal of Health Policy and Management. How would you be assured the drugs purchased from this pharmacy were safe and effective? Pharmacovigilance data are crucial for ensuring safety and effectiveness of medicines after drugs have been granted marketing approval. This study aimed to describe the pharmacovigilance systems in India, Uganda, and South Africa. It also aimed to analyze the extent to which the three countries conform to the minimum pharmacovigilance requirements by the WHO. Our study was conceived in the framework of the AMAZA, Access to Medicines in Africa and South Asia project. AMASA was a three-year research project funded by the EU FP7 program and focused on India, South Africa, and Uganda. It took place from 2010 to 2013. This paper describes the pharmacovigilance systems based on literature and key informant interviews and compares them with the World Health Organization's minimum pharmacovigilance requirements for a functional national pharmacovigilance system. This paper provides an opportunity to clarify and address limitations of pharmacovigilance and how these affect access and indicate challenges for informed policy making. Key informant interviews covered topics including structure and practices, regulatory policy, capacity, staffing, funding and training, availability and reporting of data, and awareness and usage of the systems. Pharmacovigilance data are vital to ensure ongoing safety and effectiveness of medicines and to provide information concerning regulatory actions. Pharmacovigilance is defined by the World Health Organization as the science and activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding, and prevention of adverse effects or any other possible drug-related problems. In 2010, the WHO minimum pharmacovigilance requirements were agreed upon. Briefly, these requirements were for a National Pharmacovigilance Center with a designated staff, stable basic funding, and clear mandates, a national reporting system and an ADR form, a national database, a National Pharmacovigilance Advisory Committee, and a clear communication strategy. The information from this table was presented at a dissemination meeting in London. It compares the pharmacovigilance systems in relationship to the WHO minimum standards. It focuses on the specific components of the pharmacovigilance systems, including the structure, as well as the barriers, such as capacity limitations, funding, and training. Looking at the table, one can see in India, there is no primary law, policy only. In Uganda, funding is very limited. Less than 1% of the overall National Drug Authority budget. In South Africa, in-house capacity is insufficient due to high workload and recruitment is slow. Here are the implications for policymakers from this paper. The use of greater capacity building, a clear legal structure of pharmacovigilance requirements and regulations where compliance could be enforced, and a more systematic monitoring and evaluation.
and the implications for the public. A strong pharmacovigilance system ensures the safety and effectiveness of medicines. The WHO has established core minimum requirements, and this has proven an effective way to assess the adequacy of a national pharmacovigilance system. Good pharmacovigilance will identify risks associated with medicines in a minimum amount of time. The World Health Assembly should make mandatory pharmacovigilance activities in the interest of public health.